Hey everybody, welcome back to my possibly very poorly thought out let's play slash run through of Pokemon Sapphire with several arbitrary restrictions. On today's episode I'm going to be training up Phantasm the Wingle and Ginkgo the Zigzagoon in attempt of raising their current levels of sort of suck to levels of less suck. So, you may be wondering why I'm bothering to train up this level 2 Wingle. It is mostly because of Water Gun. Water Gun being 40 base power plus same type attack boost, which I have previously discussed. Since he's a water type move, it gains an extra 50% power. So it's going to be a 60 power water move going up against the first gym, which is a rock type gym, but with the exception of a single Pokemon, as you will soon see, every Pokemon in that rock type gym has a secondary type of ground, which will cause them to take quadruple damage from that 60 base power move. In short, Water Gun is the nuke that Double Kick from Mikale Torchic's Evolved Form Combuskin can never be because it is quad effective against several of those Pokemon. So, what we are going to do is use the technique of encountering a Pokemon and then switching out to a Pokemon that can deal with that Pokemon more effectively than the one that's initially first to um, come out. So, I'm going to send out Wingle against this Pokemon here, which is a level 3 Zigzagoon, and I'm not going to attack with Phantasm, because if I do, then I will die, because Phantasm is very fragile. Instead, I will switch out to Mikale, and then Mikale will come in and use Ember, which is basically... At this point, a nuke that will annihilate and one-shot every Pokemon on this route, and that should work effectively, and I can probably get through a good amount of Pokemon like this, and when I am finished, and when I am mostly out of power points for Ember, then I will return to Old Ale Town, use that heal, and then adventure west past Petalburg into Route 104 and into the woods, and on to Rustboro City. Here's a Lotad. This is... Uh, water slash grass species of Pokemon that I would kind of have liked to capture earlier, but unfortunately I do not get that option. This is Astonish, which makes me think, which is a ghost type move, which makes me kind of think that I should have switched to him Zigzagoon there, but well, that's a risk that I'm not really willing to take. So I continue to destroy things with Ember. Phantasm has grown to level 3, which is good, and is now probably good enough to go defeat a couple of Pokemon on. I forget what gender, um, on his or her own. Okay, so here's a Wurmple that's at level 3 and knows Tackle, but Tackle kind of sucks. I'm not going to risk it, I'm going to go back to Mikale and then kill it with a Scratch, possibly. So I'm probably just going to run these Pokemon out of power points, and it's going to be something of a grind, and I may cut out parts of this, but... Yeah, I'm just going to use, I think, Scratch here and see if it's a successful one hit KO, as it sort of should be, but isn't. And I get lucky with String Shot, but don't use Scratch! It's not as good as Ember, and it will never be as good as Ember, especially since Ember is super effective on the bug type Wurmple here. So, the reason I am burning these power points is because I'm going to heal them off in Oldale Town, or at least that is my intent. So that when I adventure so that when I adventure west from Petalburg City, which is where I just came from. I will have as many available moves to use and as many available Pokemon to fight with as is possible. Because it is very, very important for me to have that because the first gym is coming up with remarkable swiftness and that is sort of scary because that is where I lost the last time I tried to do this. So I am hoping that I have better success this time. So let's see, Phantasm is almost at level 4... This is probably not going to be the most entertaining segment of this Let's Play, because as I said, here's Poochyana, which I don't think I mentioned what type Poochyana is to you yet before, but Poochyana is a dark type, except for right now it only knows Tackle. It should only know Tackle. Poochyana only, only know, learned Tackle for something of a while in this game, I think. Um, while we're waiting... I will, I'm going to touch briefly upon something that I forgot to touch upon earlier when it was actually relevant, which is set battle style. I told you all about this, but it is a restriction that I have, it is one of the restrictions that I have placed upon, you know what, I'm going to try switching to Zigzagoon here. I'm just going to try it because ghost type moves do not affect normal type Pokemon. And we are going to see if I get lucky and am able to kill Zigzagoon with my Ginkgo. Now hopefully this will work, and hopefully I will not end up regretting this. Like, Ginkgo has so few hit points remaining at this point that I'm not particularly worried about burning through the tackle power points by trying to um, 
out Muscle, Lotad, and its Growl. See, it's just using Astonish on me over and over. I think that's the only damaging move it knows. I don't think it gets absorbed this early. So I'm just going to shift a couple of those experience points onto my Zigzagoon, because she's eventually going to need them if I'm going to get her to Headbutt. Uh, tackle miss, that's sort of annoying. 95% accuracy, yeah. So, Zigzagoon learns Headbutt at what I think is level 7, but it could be like 9 or 10 or something like that. I don't really remember, but Zigzagoon eventually learns Headbutt, which is this wicked 70 base power move, plus same type attack bonus, plus a flinch chance if you're faster than the uh, Pokemon that you're using it on. Flinching basically being a status condition, which we haven't even talked about status conditions at all yet, but flinching basically meaning you get a free turn if you're lucky enough to have the 30% chance of flinch that Headbutt provides um, work in your favor. So, I'm continuing to defeat wild Pokemon. This is what is known in universe or in the Pokemon games by like the community of people who play them as grinding, which I believe I've used that term at one point before without... See, here is a Ralts. It is at level 4, as I've told you. It knows only Growl. As I have told you, and um, I can kill it with Water Gun in a couple of hits. And it knows only Growl, and this is the Ralts that Wally caught at level 5, breaking the rules of the game. <sighs> I think there's only like a 5% chance of encountering one of these, so... Obviously, every time you go on this route in Nuzlocke, it's sort of a forlorn hope that you get this Ralts, because it turns into something awesome in its sort of later stages of evolution, but... For now, it learns only Growl, and is sort of fragile, and, is gonna, and would kind of be hard to keep alive, so I'm not really regretting not having a Brawl that much. Anyway, so I was talking about set battle style, which... Level 5 is sweet. I was talking about set battle style, which is basically... In the option mode, you have the option here to sh switch between shift battle style and set battle style. What shift battle style means is that every time you battle a trainer who has more than one Pokemon, when you defeat one of their Pokemon, it will tell you what the next Pokemon they're going to send out is, and then give you a chance to change your Pokemon out. Now, set battle style does not do that. In set battle style, you get the same reaction against that next Pokemon coming out as the other trainer would get against a next Pokemon of yours coming out, which is nothing. The Pokemon just gets sent out and... If you can beat it, that's great, and if you can't, well, tough luck. So, that is the distinction between set and shift battle styles. In a nutshell, set is the one that's more like what they use on, like, the ooh, competitive Pokemon battling scene. If I may be so pretentious as to say competitive Pokemon battling scene. And it is, I, it is in my opinion... And I think, pretty unambiguously, it adds to the challenge of the game. And I don't know, I just figure I might as well. It's one more thing that I could do, possibly. So, I think Phantasm has been gaining levels pretty quickly. He's on 5 right now, he's not really showing any signs of slowing down. Now, I'm still really afraid to battle actual Pokémon with him and use Water Gun on actual Pokémon. The reason behind that being... Wingull is a really, really fragile species of Pokemon. I don't know if you noticed based on how much damage Scratch did to it when I was first trying to capture it, but Wingull is very fragile. I can show you his stats as compared with um, Zigzagoons, and you'll probably see here we have Defense 8, Special Defense 9, and 8... Well, that really tells you nothing at all, and it's probably something that I should cut out eventually, but... Wingull is a very fragile species of Pokemon, and I'm afraid of what tackles will do to him, and I'm afraid of what critical hits will do to her. Like, I've been getting really lucky with critical hits so far. There there has only been one, and that was the one that, um... That was the one critical hit that a Ginkgo scored on, uh, Mikole, when I was trying to capture... Wait, does it know Absorb? Does it get Absorb at level 4? I don't remember. I hope not, I'm going to assume not, and I'm going to try to pull this out again. So, okay, yeah, it looks like it just knows Growl, so I can probably sort of smash its face in with repeated tackles, which is good. It is good to have face-smashing Pokemon like Ginkgo appears to be shaping up into, especially for Nuzlocke's when you need to make the small amount of power points that you are given 
go sort of a long way, especially in terms of, as I've said, grinding your Pokemon up to as high levels as you can before moving on to the next route or routes. Because once a Pokemon dies, and if you screw up once, and if you get one unlucky critical hit that someone else scores on you, that's it for one of your Pokemon, that's it for one of your main answers to an entire variety of types. And things like that have an upsetting tendency to snowball. And if you lose one Pokemon that is your answer to a specific type, when that type then comes up again, you could get, like, destroyed by it. Like, right now, if I were to lose Mikale, I would have no answers to the grass type, and then a grass type could just potentially destroy the entire rest of my party and then just have that be it for my Nuzlocke challenge. So, you need to treat every Pokemon as if they are precious, because... Honestly, they are, and you can't afford to lose anyone unnecessarily. Let's see how my Ember power points are doing. Well, hmm, it looks like Mikolay's hit points are alright and faring well enough. It occurs to me that I can't burn all of my Ember power points on training up Phantasm, because Phantasm still has water guns left, which means Phantasm can still kill a couple more Pokemon. Oh, I just said kill. I don't want to think about it in terms of killing, because my own Pokemon are going to be thought about in terms of killing. So I don't want to think that every time that I go into a wild patch of Pokemon to train up my own that I'm causing a genocide. But that is sort of kind of what is happening. So I'm going to need to use a couple of Ember Power Points on training up Ginkgo, I think, because I want my two Pokemon who are not Mikolay to end up at roughly the same level for this next sort of adventure part that I'm going to be doing, going forward into the next route, etc, etc. I want them to be of roughly equal strength so that I don't really have like a whole weakest link or whatever thing going on in my team. Because it's important because if someone starts to fall behind, that someone becomes subject to critical hits, and that someone becomes subject to um, careless misplays, and that, subject, and that someone may become subject to losing their life. As I have said, each Pokemon being precious and not something that you can just afford to throw away like that from a real conceivable gain. Alright, we've gotten here another Poochyana, another Poochyana, meaning I can switch out to Mikolay. I'm probably, 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 probably going to go for Ginkgo pretty soon. Yeah, I think this is the last Ember Power Point for Phantasm. I think the rest is going to be uh, Ginkgo training. Now for the most exciting thing we've done all episodes, switching the order of the Pokemon. Yeah. So for most of the future grinding episodes like this, I'm probably just going to do this off screen, but I figured you should probably get at least one sort of ten tangential glimpse of what is to be going on behind the scenes and of my secret agony, but really of just what is going on behind the scenes while all my Pokemon get trained up mysterious levels, and I'm probably going to have to record all of them anyways, thinking on my feet, because if a Pokemon faints while grinding, then I'm going to want a record of that so that I can show you all the sad demise of one of my beloved team. Okay, Ginkgo learned Tail Whip. Tail Whip is a move that reduces the defense of the opposing Pokemon, much like Leer, which you may or may not have seen before. I don't know how many of you are completely new to Pokemon games and using possibly somewhat foolishly my Let's Play as a guide to the general rules and strategies in them, but Tail Whip lowers the opposing Pokemon's defenses, making them more susceptible to physical moves like Tackle and not like elemental moves such as my Ember and Water Gun here. So we're probably not going to be seeing a whole lot of use out of um, Tail Whip because it's only really important. Defense lowering is only is, in my opinion, only usually worth it when you can do it more than one stage at a time, and there are certain moves that do that, and Tail Whip is not one of those moves that do, does that. Tail Whip will only lower the opposing Pokemon's defense by a single stage, which will increase the damage dealt to them, unless they switch out, by physical moves by something like 1.5 times? Yeah, something like that. And then if you use it again, then it'll become a total of 2 times. Okay, interesting thing that just happened. Do you see here how Ginkgo has that little, um orange and orange box with a red stripe on it, that means Ginkgo is holding an item. Now, I did not give Ginkgo an item to hold, but because Ginkgo is a Zigzagoon, Ginkgo's ability, which is called Pickup, has managed to 
as you can see, pick up. It says it may pick up items. So that means while I'm walking around or fighting wild Pokemon, occasionally, Ginkgo will just pick something up, and then I'll be able to take it. And it is a full restore, which is fantastic, because that fully restores the hit points of one of my Pokemon. And I really think that I'm not going to be using that. Hmm... I'm ambiguous as to whether or not I should allow myself to use that. I think what I'm going to do about that is I'm going to put the full restore in a PC and then if I eventually decide... That's an ethical dilemma, like... I don't really know how I'm going to deal with pickup because it's not really cool for me to be allowed to just use the items that my Pokemon find on the floor because... Hmm... I think I don't get it. I think I don't get it. I think I'm going to take it from him anyways, and I'm going to decide later if I'm going to use it, or if I think that's okay. Mikolai is sort of running low on HP. Mikolai is almost in the critical hit range. I think that I really shouldn't get that full restore. I don't really think it is entirely ethical for me to get that full restore. I'll take it from her anyways. Hmm... God, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's only I think it's only fair for me to initially try to play through this game without um, allowing myself to use the pickup items, and then maybe if I fail that way, then the next time I come back, I will allow myself to use pickup items. But for now, that just seems a little bit towing the line to me. So I think I'm going to put that in a PC and then never look at it again or something like that. Now what I am going to allow myself to do is use hold items, which is where you give one of your Pokemon an item rather than taking it from them. And there are a variety of reasons why you could do that, most of them revolving around like boosting the power of certain types of moves or providing other weird effects. Now the reason I will allow myself to use hold items with the exception of berries, as has been previously mentioned, is because I think that that's more of a strategic element as opposed to pick up just finding random items on the ground which is, you know, not a strategic element at all, and is in fact entirely luck-based. Mikolai is running out of hit points, but at the same time, it's not as bad as it seems because she's also running out of Ember Power Points, so it looks as though my grinding slash training session is going to come to an end pretty shortly, and I don't know if we've hit 10 minutes yet, but... I've been blabbering on about this for what feels like a sort of ridiculously long time. Okay, Gene goes out in front, Low Tide still can't damage me, which means free experience points for me. That is good, I think. Oh, that's pretty definitely good, so... Um... I think what's going to happen now is when I'm done with this, I'm going to go heal up, and then we have to tackle two routes at once, because once I leave Petalburg City, I cannot stop walking until I reach the next town, which is Rustboro, which is the home of the first gym, which is two routes and a forest, well, it's technically one route, but two sections of the same route and a forest away from where I currently am. Huh. I don't remember if Zigzagoon learns Sand Attack. If he gets Sand Attack first, then Headbutt's probably not until, like, 9, which is sort of gross. Okay, here's another Low Tad. Wow, I'm getting lucky with the Low Tads, it looks like. Fortune has smiled upon this endeavor of mine. I mean, obviously, first I want to clear out the, um, tackle power points from Ginkgo, and I want to at least attempt to defeat a good number of Pokemon with, um, Water Gun while I have the chance, and I don't really know when else I will get that chance, besides right now, so, uh, Zigzagoon level 3 is, wait, remember not to fight it, this is the point where we switch out, we switch out to Mikale. I think once Mikale gets to about, oh yeah, see that's really shady. One more hit, and, sh and, and he'll be in a critical hit range. I don't know if that's a risk I'm willing to take. Okay, I grew a level, so... I think one more hit will do it, unless I decide to be just completely reckless and stupid. 
which hopefully I am not that dumb, so... Maybe I don't have to worry as much about one more hit from a Wurmple, because Wurmple hits are sort of pathetically weak and probably won't do more than a single point of damage to me, but... Uh, I'm at 8. Uh, this is really pushing it. I think Mikalei can last through one more hit, even if it's a critical hit. I think... And it's really pushing it, but... Okay, here's a Poochiana, so... Critical hits had better not be stronger than I think they are, and this Poochiana had better not score one right now, because that would be just horrifying, and it would kill me, and okay. Alright, I'm safe, I'm at six hit points, which means I am out of here? Okay, so... Huh. Actually... I'm gonna try and beat a couple of Pokemon with Phantasm. See exactly how how um fragile how how this um hyped up fragility that I've been talking about actually is. I'm going to try to defeat a po couple of Pokemon with Phantasm. If I run into low tads, I am lucky because Kinko can take them out without taking any damage. So luckily none of these Wurmples know Poison Sting, which means I don't need to panic yet. I think going into Petalburg Woods. I'm just going to need to one-shot every Wurmple I've run into because they have a tendency to carry this move called Poison Sting, which carries a 30% chance of poisoning your Pokemon. Now, when a Pokemon is poisoned, not only does it take damage every turn from the poison while in battle, but while walking around, it gets slowly damaged, and so it will eventually die of the poison, likely before you reach a Pokemon Center. And even if it doesn't die before you reach a Pokemon Center, you will then have been forced to waste a heal, and heals in order to save your Pokemon, and you'll have to make the decision of whether this Pokemon's life is, w is worth um, wasting a heal and possibly risking several of your other Pokemon's lives. Okay. 30 experience points from this. Okay. This is going fair enough. I should probably, unless I'm very unlucky, be able to take down a good number of these. I don't want to run the risk of a critical hit, like, tearing me to shreds, but... Okay, see, Watergun did a pretty good amount of damage now. I'm only taking about two hit points per um, hit, which is a good deal better than I expected to do. Mm, Phantasm gets 23 more. Which is a good deal better than I expected and remembered Wingull's defenses to be. Okay. Here's another Wurmple. I can defeat it with Water Gun, And then Phantasm will probably grow to level 7. I don't remember when he learns, like flying type moves because you know seagull water slash flying type pokemon gets same type attack boost on both water type moves and flying type moves i don't remember when he gets a flying type move i think it's like wing attack though and i think it's not for a while i can't remember if wing go oh supersonic supersonic is a move that confuses the opponent which makes it so that they occasionally hit themselves after it's used however its accuracy is sort of pathetic. Its accuracy is only 55, so it will hit slightly more than half of the time it is used. Not very good odds, and with a Pokemon like Phantasm, who I really can't afford to have take more damage than the absolute minimum damage that it is possible for him to take, I really don't want to be gambling very much on supersonic hitting, or on supersonic potentially missing, I guess is what I'm gambling it on. So, that's where I, that's why I think it's really sort of a sketchy move to use at best, and why, unless I find myself in a really desperate situation, I don't think I will ever resort to Supersonic. Okay, so, nine more Water Guns left means I can take out four more Pokemon, and unless I get lucky enough to score a critical hit or something, because that last one Water Gun will not be worth anything to me, unfortunately. So, right, here's a Poochiana. I'll use Water Gun now. It might be advisable for me to attempt to beat a Pokemon or two with uh, Willow before I try to make this work. Or, sorry, not Willow. God, Willow is the name of my old Zigzagoon. Um, not Willow. Uh, Ginkgo before I try to. Before I finish off all the Water Gun PowerPoints so that if things go bad, I'll have someone to switch to. 
Okay, I'm, I'm gonna try that quickly. I'm going to try to take- oh, Ginkgo got another item that I'm never going to use. And it's a rare candy. Rare candy increases the level of one of your Pokemon by one. So, I'm probably never going to use this, I'm just going to put it in my PC because I'm racked by spasms of guilt, etc, etc. Okay. Gingo's pretty much got a critical level of HP as it is, but who? That did way less damage than I was hoping. That did way less damage than I was hoping it was going to. I did not realize that Zigzagoon's attack was that low. Like, that could be really legitimately bad going forward. I did not know Zigzagoon was going to have this much trouble defeating something like a Wurmple. Okay. So now I'm questioning whether or not it's a good idea to let Zigzagoon go in against a Pokemon that is sort of good and stuff. So, yeah, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to put him back to the back of my party and then try to take out the last couple with Phantasm and then... Maybe I will try to train Zigzagoon on a Pokemon on in like an area that is less threatening, like Route 101. I think it was 101. It might be 201. I forget. But the first route, the one from a little root town, the one from the town with my mom's house and with all the low levels, with all the <coughs> excuse me, the one with the uh, the Wurmple that I killed earlier. Or that I defeated. Oh god, I keep saying killed. That is awfully morbid and also awfully true. According to what I've established based on this challenge, that is awfully true. I don't want to think about that, as I have said. So... Right. Um... I don't really know that there's a whole lot left for me to say here. Other than sort of idly comment on um, what's going down, on... Maybe Water Gun will get lucky, except for no. Um, I should probably go, if I'm going to use those last tackle power points, I should go and do that. Um, Phantasm gained 23 experience points. I'm going to go over here, briefly back to Old Dale Town, and... It is Route 101, okay, and I'm going to attempt to use a couple of Ginkgo power points. Alright! Okay, there, here's a Pokemon. A Pokemon! Actually, now that I think about it, there are still four more power points that I have on um, Ember that I don't really want to go to waste. Okay. Oh, that was a critical hit, so that was lucky. That turned what should have been a 3-hit KO into a 2-hit KO for me. I guess I can't really complain about that. Especially since God was that lucky, but... Did I just get two critical hits consecutively? Wow, we've only seen one other critical hit so far this game. I mean, I guess that's good? God, it's good that Zigzagoon gets a move as wickedly powerful as Headbutt, because with an attack stat like that... She's going to need it. Okay. Here's the growl, which is sort of... Upsetting. I have four power points left, which is enough to comfortably take on one more Pokemon with Ginkgo. And then Ginkgo's power points and Lease here are up. For the moment. Now, I know I'm going to have probably two left after this, but... Oh, see, that, that, that's a critical hit. I got critical hitted. Two of those would have beaten Ginkgo, so... Would have killed, murdered Ginkgo, so... I am done with grinding my Zigzagoon now because I am terrified. Um, let's see what item this is. That's a nugget. I should go put them in my PC before I forget, but yeah, I'll remember, I think. Um... Alright. What was I doing? I was training you, Phantasm. On, um... We had one more Pokemon to take down, if I recall correctly. Eventually, Phantasm should be able to one-shot these, but... These Zigzagoons and friends, but... For the moment, that is not true, and that is 
not going to be happening, so I'm going to be spending all of my valuable water gun power points on them. Great, this Zigzagoon is fainted. I... 25 experience points means I do not get to grow a level. Um, switch for Mikolai. Let's see how many Ember power points you have. You have three more Ember power points, and because Ember is guaranteed to hit and guaranteed to be a one-hit KO on whatever it hits in here, I am just going to use those three because, as I have said, every experience point that I can get will be entirely worth it because I need all of them and if I'm just going to be healing off those uh, power points that I've used in a couple of minutes anyways I may as well get that little blue bar to as high as it can possibly go while I can and before I have to do it against something that is actually threatening to Mikolay's health which several of which most of the Pokemon that I'm going to be encountering later on in the game will be much less easy to one-hit KO than these have been so far with a move as weak as Ember. This is possibly the um, best spot in the game for really actually sort of somewhat intensive grinding or training a Pokemon because at all of the later spots um, your Pokemon will be higher leveled but so will they and you will have to rely on and to one-shot Pokemon, you will have to rely on moves that have much lower power points. Like Ember has 25, it's equivalent for the later game. Flamethrower has only 15, and Fire Blast, which is the most powerful fire-type move, with the exception of a couple strange, rare ones. Um, ha oh, that's the wrong box. I'm going to my own PC because there is a convenient item storage section for in case you want to put items in it that you feel it would be illegitimate to, to use as I do. Pick up items, for instance. So... Okay! Having completed my grinding, I'm going to check on the power points of my Pokémon to make sure that there's nothing that I haven't taken full advantage of. They're the Scratch power points, but as I have said, it's not a guaranteed one-hit KO. And I don't want to take chances. I really don't want to take chances, so I'm just going to heal. I could probably um, do some scratching on Pokemon in Route 101 on level 2s, but I don't want to take chances because I can't run from Pokemon. That is another thing that I forgot to mention. I am forbidding myself from running from Pokemon. Every Pokemon you encounter must be defeated or must defeat you in the process of you trying to defeat it. And that is how it goes, and that is what I will hold myself to. So, we have healed, now we are going. Now, I want to save every Ember PowerPoint that I can, so I'm going to switch to Phantasm just for this sort of excursion through the grass, this sort of brief excursion-y thingy through the grass, and once I make it out of here, I'm lucky. Then I will switch back to Mikale and all right. So we're done with this route. We're into Petalburg City. Now I'm going to go explore these buildings briefly, just to sort of give you maybe more a more detailed run through the backstory here. The ones in Old Ale Town. Thank you for playing with Wally. This is Wally's house, as I've said earlier. The air is a lot cleaner there, whereas Wally has already left. Wonder where I could have gotten right now? Probably not very far with his Ralts that knows only Growl. It's been ages since I've seen him smile. That's kind of adorable, actually. Aw, aw. Sorry for making fun of it. Okay, so... Right. My dad's gym. Now, this may look like the first gym, but it's actually not. It is actually the fifth, because my dad does not challenge me because his Pokemon are, like, in the 30s, and he said he'll battle me when I can show him four gym badges, which means he's the fifth gym. And he's the last gym in sort of this section of the Hoenn Continent. Okay, so... This guy, I don't think we get any items from any of these guys. Or from anyone like this. Yeah, man, so do I. <sighs> but, okay. So, I don't think we get any items from any of these trainers or really anything... Or, not trainers, from any of these NPCs or anything really 
interesting particularly. There are a couple of items that I can't reach yet because I don't have Surf that are on the other side of that lake back there. Call this family over from Johto, interesting. Yeah, so I would go back to Old Ale, except for I don't care because I remember that the people in the Old Ale houses gave me nothing. It is automatically sent to a storage box over a PC. Because the people in the Old Ale houses sort of gave me nothing, which, if I remember correctly, they just gave me sort of advice that I already knew. Well, looks like this is it. One more step, and I'm out into the next route, so I'm going to save for now, and playtime an hour and eight minutes. God, how long has this episode been going on for? I will see you next time on Let's Play Pokemon Sapphire.